Well, good morning. Good to have you. I'm Pastor Steve. Welcome to the Firehouse. Today, we are continuing our series, and it is uh, Are We There Yet? Week number 10. Uh, I, I, again, I, we won't finish today, so there will be a week number 11. And as far as, the, I don't know how far it goes from there, but this, to, this is week number 10. If you have not, uh, if you've missed a few, please go online to the Firehouse Chapel YouTube channel and watch them and catch up because they're building upon each other. Uh, we left off last week th with this, and the series has been about this. Are we at the place where God turns his back on our country, where God turns his back on our churches? Are we there yet? It's a question that we have to ask. It's a self-examination type question, but it's important that we ask that question because we then dis determine where we're at in our walk and our faith in Jesus Christ. Are we there yet? I left off with a passage of scripture in the book of Jeremiah. You can turn to it. It's not going to be our key verse today. But Jeremiah chapter 17, verse number 9. Jeremiah says this. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. Um, the NIV calls it beyond cure. That word desperately wicked is also translated into being a terminal incurable illness. Man has a sin problem. Man has a death problem. And I'm not talking physical death. We all, short of the return of Jesus Christ, we all are going to go the way of the grave. But the fact of the matter is, the, the death problem that I'm talking about is the death of our soul. We all have a soul sin problem. And the Bible says here in Jeremiah that our hearts are deceitful above all things. We have a terminal illness. And there's only one cure for the terminal illness of your life, and that is Jesus Christ. Not a tradition, not a religion, not a, uh, not a man, not a, a self-help book, not a be good person stuff. There is only one way, and that is through Christ Jesus. The trend, though, we see, especially today, and, it's been, and we're going to talk about today, is influencing the church. The trend today is to normalize as much as possible because when you see an opportunity when sin when the enemy sees an opportunity to make things that were abby normal to be normal when things were wrong but are now right and things that are right are now wrong any opportunity that the enemy has to do that <coughs> the enemy will of course do that he tries to normalize this thing for example and i i really <coughs> struggled with whether to talk about this or not, but I'm like, you know what? Uh, I, I got to. Um, I don't watch any of these award shows. I, I think they're absolutely ridiculous. Uh, they are. They're just, they're just flat out stupid. Where, well, anyway, this past Sunday, Sunday of all days, I believe it was, the Grammys were on. Was it last Sunday? God's Day? God's Day. And CBS, I believe it was, correct? It's on CBS? None of you know because none of you watched it, right? <laughs> Liars! <clears throat> I believe it was CBS. They said, come worship with us tonight. Come worship with us. And I did see that there was a Christian band that won the best Christian music award given out by these people, the Grammys, and not to take anything away from them, but it would really bother me when a bunch of heathens give me an award for the best Christian song. Nothing against the band that won it, and just kind of rubbed me a little long. And the applause was very weak, extremely weak. But not for the song entitled Unholy. If you haven't seen this, don't go watch it. If you are going to watch it, be prepared. The song is entitled Unholy. Come worship. Don't, let's not forget. Come worship with us. Unholy was performed by, well, I don't know what his name is, some guy, some idiot. And by this other idiot who's now a woman. Uh, her name is Kim. They applauded and cheered her because, and I wrote this down, she's the first trans woman to win a Grammy. 
So I'm like, trans woman, so is she a woman who's trying to be a man, or is it a man trying to be a woman? I get confused. And, but yet, no one can define what a woman is, but they want to be called a trans woman, but you don't know what a woman is. Anybody losing track here? Or is it me? Yeah. People stood, applauded, cheered. The song praises a life of unholiness. The display was from the very pit of hell. It was ungodly. It was unholy. It was horrible. And it was on regular TV, so if any of your kids could just very plainly watch it. <clears throat> Here we had a crowd, an auditorium full, of what's called the, the people that lead our country, you know, the, the actors and actresses and, the, and the, 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 the singers and the musicians and the, you know, you have these influencers. They stood and they applauded and they cheered throughout this song. It was, the, it was red, it was demonic, it was everything and they just, it was crazy. And the disturbing part of this unholy boldness of the night was they weren't trying to hide it. There was no veil, no smoke and mirrors, no beating around the bush. They said, come worship with us. And here is the presentation of the song, Unholy. Do you see what the world is doing? Do you see what Satan is doing? Or is people just, now remember, they're trying to do what? Normalize the behavior. Now, when I saw those people cheering and applauding on their feet, I mean, they were, they, they, the place came unglued. Let me just throw this, this is just me thinking this through. If they applauded for that, how do they view us? If that's the standard of their behavior now, the world is saying, this is what we applaud. This is what we stand up for. This is our life. This is the direction we want to go. Do you think for one second that the church of Jesus Christ is not in any way, shape, or form going to come under any persecution in the last days leading up to the rapture of the saints when we think that the world is now applauding that and despising godly things? When they say it is unholy, sponsored by, and this cracked me up, Pfizer. It just, I, I chuckled on that. I'm not anti-vax, I'm not pro-vax, just so you know, but it made me laugh. But do you think that somehow, some way, that the church of Jesus Christ is going to escape persecution? That this won't be a targeted event anymore? When you got these influencers who stand up and rejoice in the presentation of unholy. Here's a question I pondered. If they aren't afraid to promote their ungodly agenda, why should we, the church, not be afraid to proclaim the truth about holiness? Amen. I don't like always hearing about holiness, because you know why? Then I see the sin that Chira has. <laughs> it just breaks my heart. I mean, I'm just like, yeah, dang. It just breaks my heart. No, none of us want to hear about holiness all the time. Why? What did Jeremiah, what did he say again? I, I forget. I, oh, yeah. What's our heart? Deceitful above all things. Who can know it? See, but holiness brings us to the place where we get from unholy to holiness through Jesus Christ. But what? If they're so bold, if they, I mean, there's, there, was, there was no beating around. There was no veiled display. It was like, hey, look at this hand while they're doing something down here. You know what I'm saying? This was just in your face. People were like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's typical. It's typical. Maybe it's because for way too long, compromise and lack of godly devotion has gar has has literally weakened Christianity. Maybe it's time for our personal lives as well to realize where do we stand? Are we there yet? Have we, 
have we forsaken the holiness of God and embraced the unholiness of the world? That song was so apropos today. Oh, I'm sorry, that's French. <laughs> Appropriate, oh. There's my Spanish. Um, it was very appropriate. There's English for some of you who are lost. Man, our chains are gone, babe. Our, our chains are gone. But some people don't even know, like I said, that they're even chained. Because they've allowed. We, when we allow things in our personal life, the chains are just building on us. And eventually it's just going to crush us. The world, the church, sadly, is failing to acknowledge that the lack of God creates a depraved heart and a depraved society. And that's the truth. When we remove the knowledge of God <clears throat> or fail to acknowledge God, this is, we're going back, we, we, we don't want to go back yet, but in the book of Hosea chapter 4 is where we're looking, verses 1 through 4, and then this is out of verse number 6. When we fail to have knowledge of God or acknowledge who God is, when we fail to do that, our heart will do nothing but grow cold. A society will grow more depraved all the time. I forget who the preacher was at one time. I remember the quote, and this was years ago, so we've really progressed, if you want to call it progressed. But I remember a uh, he was on TV. I don't know if he's a famous evangelist. I just can't remember. Some of you may remember. But he said, the way the society is going today, we are going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. What I saw Sunday night is we should apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. For us to look at that and have that in our society. And to see in our personal lives, if we fail to stand because of fear of retribution, or, or maybe we don't stand because we don't really know what we stand for. I encourage you once again to find out where you stand with the things of God. Where are you in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you still an infant and it's been 16 years? Are you still sucking your thumb in a fetal position in the corner hoping somebody gives you some milk and chewed up food? Or are you standing firm in your faith and walk with Jesus Christ and you know, you know that your heart, who your heart belongs to. See, the world today wants us to be so fickle. They want us to like this, love that, have this, take that. They want us to do all these different things. Why? The more they keep us moving, we don't know who we are in Christ. That's one of the failures I see for people who in their walk in faith. Now, I've only been a Christian 48 years. I know I'm still, like, warming up to this thing. Like, Gray's 116,000 years or something. Now, Ray went to school with Noah. I went to school with Noah's grandson. So we're getting there, you know what I'm saying? But what's happening to this world is because the world is, is displaying things and trying to normalize it. So when you remove the knowledge of God or acknowledgement of God out of society or out of churches, the result is guaranteed. Turn in your Bibles, and we're going to take some time to read this this morning. Turn your Bibles to the book of Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 1. And I'm, I, before we get into the passage, I just want to give you a little background <clears throat> on what, when, as Paul wrote the book of Romans. Uh, you know, it's important that we understand. Now, I believe the Bible was written specifically for a certain time and date. I, I agree with that. But I also agree that that certain time and date hasn't expired yet. You know what I'm saying? Because it's still, it's still applicable today to our lives. But we need to understand why Paul wrote this book. It's very important. So Paul, he's looking out at the spiritual condition of all people, Jews and Gentiles. Because here in, in Rome, in, in the, the Italians, the Jewish people were converting to Christianity. The Italians, the, the Gentiles were accepting Christ. And he was concerned with them. He's, Paul, I, I don't remember where I heard it. Paul was like the pastor of pastors. He was like, he, he shepherded these, all two-thirds of the New Testament he wrote to. And he was like their pastor's pastor. He, he took it very serious about shepherding his people about God's people. 
And see, he was concerned about their spiritual condition because the Jews and the Gentiles are alike. And here's where they're alike. Sinners in need of a savior. Okay? No one has an upper, no, no one in this room, if you're at home, not a single one of you have a single one step up above anybody else. Why? Because we all start as sinners. That's where we all start. You know, some people don't believe that. Some people believe that they got their church pedigree papers. And this is what they do. This is what they've done. And this is so they're somehow better. Well, won't they be surprised? Because there's a lot of church people that go to hell. And see, Paul was saying, let's get it right out here. They're all sinners. See, and what he did, though, and this is the good part, God, he, what he was talking about, God provided salvation through Jesus Christ, through the redemptive work on the cross. You read the book of Romans, you can't help, man, but read of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. I mean, Paul's all about it. Paul's, Paul's my favorite. I like Peter. I like uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I like Acts. Um, weird first name, but I, I don't know. It's just... But uh, some of you are like, oh, look it up. Uh, but anyway, but, 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 but I, I, I like Paul. And, 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 and throughout the book of Romans, he talks about this salvation through Christ. See, he talks about the price that has been paid for your salvation. You know why you fall away from God? You forget about what was paid for you. Like I've said this before, my dad served in the Korean War. Didn't talk about it much, but he served in the Korean War. Found out later on in life, my dad was a forward observer he was a civil engineer, but he was a forward observer for um, artillery. My dad in, would go into North Korea with his team, and they would rain down, they would send back uh, uh, coordinates for the United States to shell the North Korean strongholds. Over his head, all around him. Men on his unit died. My dad was blown out of a Jeep one time. Anybody that's ever served in the military, I have the utmost respect for you. Any of you family members that have given up, meaning somebody serving or gave up the ultimate sacrifice, got the utmost respect for me. And the freedom of this country, I, I, I take it very seriously because it's a, we, we were established as a godly free country. I take that very seriously. But what happens is, and look what's happening, people are forgetting the price of freedom. Therefore, this is the worst place you could ever live. But yet, we got tens of thousands of people crossing borders left and right trying to get in this country. Why? Because it's the greatest country on the world, in the world. But are we? Those of us that have been raised in it, we take it for granted. And that's what happens with our salvation. When you forget the price that was paid, when you, when you think your soul didn't reek like a cesspool of the darkest of dark hole, and that only Jesus Christ can rescue you and set you free and give you freedom and heal your heart and heal your soul. When you forget about that, you are simply going to give up the walk of faith. You will take it for granted. You will somehow think you deserve it. And you ain't, none of us deserve the salvation that Christ has given us. None of us. But thank be to God. He loved us that much. See, it's all, been, it's all been provided. This is what Paul talks about. It's all been provided for, but can't change a simple single life, hear me, unless you receive it by faith. My wife and I just had a conversation the other day. A lot of people believe in Jesus. The devil believes in Jesus. He does. The devil believes in Jesus. When Jesus was born, what did he do? Went and got the king, what's his name? Herod guy. Let's kill all the baby boys three years and younger. Why? Because Jesus, or the devil knows, believes in Jesus. He believes who he is. He knows who he is. But faith is different. And I did a series a long time ago where it talks about a lot of people believe, but not people don't walk by faith. Believing is just the beginning. Believe, on, on March 7th, 1975, at 11.05 p.m., when I accepted Jesus Christ in my heart as my Lord and Savior and prayed that prayer that I prayed, I took it in belief that he set me free. The last 48 years, I have walked in faith in faith, drawing near to him every single day, or doing my best to do so. See, there's a difference. A lot of people believe. Not a lot of people walk in faith. Paul talks about this. See, salvation, 
Paul shows is only the starting point. Paul is showing believers how then to move into true and lasting faith in Christ. So if you pray a prayer, that's only beginning here for you. It's only beginning. You pray. Awesome. Now start walking in faith. Well, how do you do it? I asked this last week. How are you doing with your Bible reading? You just reading it as a book? Stop it. Read it as a life-giving word of God. How's your prayer time? You go into the Lord with like this. <sighs> Morning, Lord. You know I'm tired. I stayed up and watched Grammys last night. <laughs> Let's just cut to the chase. I know you're busy. Just bless my family. Don't let me get fired today at work. Yeah, that about wraps it up. Amen. And there's not a whole lot of faith in that. Remember what I said a few weeks ago? What do you got to do? Suck carpet. carpet. Suck carpet. Dig in. Fight the good fight. Run the race. Don't go to the right, don't go to the left. Fight the good fight. See, what we, the context of this is extremely important because here's what we're going to read. You, in Romans chapter 1, I'm going to begin reading at verse number 18. And it reads as this. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Now, let, let's talk about who, let's remember... Who is Paul writing to? The believers in Christ, both Jew and Gentiles. And what's happening here? The truth is being suppressed. Same way in the book of Hosea, Hosea talks about, through God, about how Israel is suppressing the truth. There is no knowledge or acknowledgement of what? God in the land anymore. Therefore, people's hearts do what? Grow cold. And they will be destroyed. Right here he's saying, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Verse number 19. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. Are there deep things of God I don't understand? Absolutely. Will I ever figure it out? Nope. No. I, I won't. My, my comprehension, whatever, I, 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 don't, I don't know if any of us can fully comprehend who God really is. But that doesn't mean that God's hiding stuff from us and that we, he doesn't equip us. And I really see this as a need, especially in this series. The reason why I think this series is so timely is because this series is equipping us to walk through a fire walk through persecution, to walk through tribulation, to walk through and find out where our faith is so that we will stand and we will stand firm. So I believe that God has all the answers. I do. I believe God has all the answers in his word. And he reveals them to our heart and life. And God help any preacher, including myself, that would stand behind this holy music stand and hold back the truth from you. God help him. God help him. Verse number 19. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. Verse number 20. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. Um, a good friend of mine, Doc, we work out together and we talk about different medical things because it's just love talking about that kind of stuff. And uh, we were talking about um, issues with, with, um, with a liver, with a bilirubin, you know, but when the little bambinos turn yellow, you know, and they come out, they, they, they're yellow, they look like a banana. And back in the day, I mean, they've advanced, but when Cheer cranked out our kids, uh, Stephen was pretty yellow when he came out, and uh, you know, plus we didn't have insurance. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but uh, I did get miles for your son on the American Airlines credit card. But, uh, but uh, the, 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 the doctor then said, yeah, he, his Billy Rubin's high, so get him home, put him in a diaper, and put him in front of the window in our apartment. So Stephen and I, I was in my underwear, 
And we just, because I figured, well, if he's getting some sun, I might as well get some sun too. So, uh, so we would put him in, and you know, I don't remember every 20 minutes. Did you flip him over? I, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. But he just, you know, and it helps with the the bilirubin buildup in the liver. So this came up the other day. I go, Mike, what? How, how, how does Billy, first of all, who's Billy and who's Reuben? It, 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 you know, it sounds like a sandwich. And, he, and, I, and I'm, I'm like, how did, how, did, how did this happen? And he says, well, when an infant's blood is, 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 is leaving the placenta and now it's having to operate not on the mom's blood, but now it's operating on its own blood, it's the byproduct of the switchover, the changeover. It's like when you're changing your truck oil from regular to synthetic. How many of you understand what I'm talking about here? You gotta, it's got to get out. Okay, and you got to filter it out or else that, that bad boy is going to get clogged. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, and it's the same way. And so the liver does, and sometimes the, it, it can't function it out, or filter it out fast enough. So the Billy Rubin goes. And, and, and I said, how in the Sam Hill can someone believe that we just popped up one day? Like, boop, here we are. Oh, there's a person. Or we were swinging by our tail in a tree, our tail snapped off, we hit the ground and we stood up and went, oh, that hurt. How can anybody believe that? When God has put the body together, the human body, in such a way that still astounds people who cut you open every day and look inside and go, huh, look at that. Wait, we better keep that part. They may need it. You know what I'm saying? But see, God right here in his word, he says, it's been made so simple to man. Now, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his internal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. Verse number 21. For although they knew God, now did you catch that? Although they knew, that's past tense. Right? Isn't that what it is? Past tense? Yeah. Right? Because it happens like, I knew that. Right. Or is that different? I don't know, but let's go with it. I, I took English as a foreign language, so I, I don't remember all of it. But for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. So let's, let's look at, let, let's, let's, Look at that. So they knew God, but did they know him? Did they, did they just know of him? But that word translated is they knew him. They knew him. But what did they do? It says they neither glorified him as their God, and their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. They embraced the world. They embraced the world, its philosophies, its society, its morals, its standards, and they failed to acknowledge God the same way in the book of Hosea when God speaks to the nation and says, you have failed to acknowledge me. And their thinking becomes what? Futile? And their foolish hearts were darkened. Wait, wait, their foolish hearts were darkened. What did Jer what was the guy named? Jeremiah? Wasn't my, wasn't a bullfrog, but <laughs> Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, "What the heart is, what deceitful, above all things. Who can know? It? Do you ever anybody seeing a pattern? A pat? Anybody seeing a me? Okay, I saw the pattern, and it's very simple. Without Christ, without God, our th thinking becomes futile and darkened. Verse number twenty-two." Now, here's the part that you got to really look at. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. Another translation is, I'm not saying, I'm not speaking out of school, honey. And Steve, tell your mom, I'm not speaking about me. They were morons. <laughs> it's what the word says. It says that although they claim to be wise, I've met a lot of wise people that are stupid. Anybody, anybody, 
Anybody sitting there one? <laughs> How many of you attempted? Put your hand up. <laughs> they claimed to be wise, but they became, they became. That, that's, a, that's, a, uh, that's a phrase. I don't know if it's a prepositional, propositional f phrase dealing with E equals MC squared. But it, it, it means that they became, they turned into something. Okay? They became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal men, birds, animals, and reptiles. So you, you see what they've done? They have taken, they have taken what they once believed and they've exchanged it. Like when you walk with Christ. Remember the joy that you felt in your heart. Like people say, I had such an emotional conversion. Okay, which is good. I, I guess for me, my emotional conversion was one tear. I, that's pretty emotional for me. Especially then since I hadn't cried in probably 10 years. But one tear. But emotions only last so long. But it's the desire of your heart. It's the desire of your heart knowing that he loves me that much that he died for me. Now that changes a person's life. They exchanged that. They said, yeah, yeah, that was nice. But I want something different. I want a statue. I want an image. Let's make an image of a bird. And let's worship that. Let's make an image of an elephant. Let's make an image of a donkey. Let's make one of them blue. Let's make one of them red. <laughs> Let's worship those. Because so they have the answers. Of course they do. But they've exchanged it. They exchanged it. I, I don't like exchanging things. I, 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 I'm terrible at it. I, I, I am terrible with a capital terrible. I... I First of all, I don't go in stores. You didn't know this. Um, but to even exchange, like a fish, fishing lure, I just, uh, I'll just keep it. Her? She is amazing. Like, I don't know if, if she, I keep telling her, she, Alexis tells her, Danielle tells her, she should do like a YouTube thing on how to exchange things. She had a pair, she had something that I think it was 14 years old, and she took it in. <laughs> And, and they, they exchanged it. It was, it was the lady. The, not only did they exchange it, they gave her money after it was all over. She, she's like, it's, it's, she should teach this kind of thing. She just bang, exchange it. I can't do it. I just can't. But exchanging means you have one thing. You give it to somebody or something, and they give you something back. What they did here is they gave their salvation and in return they received an image. They gave up their holiness. In return they became unholy. Somebody should write a song about that. Therefore, I got to hurry because I want to get to this part. Therefore God gave them over. Do you hear that? God said, okay. You ever, you ever look at a kid and go, go ahead. Just do it. And why do we do that? Because we've probably done that in our life. And we're like, we, we're like you know, they square their shoulders off at you. And you're like, go ahead. You want to touch the stove? Go ahead. And then they go to touch it. And you go, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Never forget, my mom told me one day to go play in the traffic. And I did. She came out there screaming. I mean, we lived on a, before we lost our house, we lived on a very busy road. I'm out there just, ah, this is fun. It's like uh, Frogger. <laughs> she came out there swearing, grabs me, stops traffic, beats me the whole way to the front door. I'm like, you, you told me to go play in the traffic. Oh, you're an idiot. Who listens to that kind of stuff? Now I'm confused. I think that started me ready for marriage. When they say one thing, you know, when they, now come on, come on, guys. You know what I'm saying there? 
Is everything okay? Yeah. So we go with yeah. An hour later, things aren't well. It's just a bubbling volcano. <laughs> I'm going to pay for that one. Wait, it's Valentine's Day coming up, honey. You know what? You don't have to get me anything. We'll just, we'll, yeah, we'll just call it even. All right, so real quick. Therefore, God gave them over to the sinful desires of their heart. He says, you want to do this? Go ahead. To sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. Boy, is that happening today. For degrading, for degrading of their bodies with one another. That's what society is doing today. We see it in our elementary schools, junior highs, our high schools, our colleges. We see it throughout life where the world is exchanging, getting people to exchange the love that they've experienced, the mercy that they received through Jesus Christ. And there's a goal there to degrade them. And it says here in verse number 25, they exchanged the truth of God for a lie. That's what they've exchanged it for. How many of you have ever done something? I want to see a show of hands because my hand's already up. How many of you have ever done something you know it's wrong, but you did it anyway? Okay, the rest of you are liars. Liars, you should repent before you go get hit by that bus outside because that, <laughs> that's, that's just going to happen. Because you don't want to go to hell because you just lied in church. Every one of us have done it. In fact, the Apostle Paul says, he goes, you know, sometimes I do things I don't want to do. Why do I do it? I don't know why I do it, but I do it anyway. I don't like that. See, what happens right here is they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and they worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. Amen. Now, here's, I, gotta, I want to close with this. It says they exchanged. Now, that's, that's a very interesting word there. Uh, I wrote the Greek word down next to it, and I'm meta so. I don't even attempt it. I, I took Greek in college, and it was all Greek to me. <laughs> but it, 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 it means this, to change into, and this word, I can honestly tell you, as God's my witness, I never used it. I've never spoken it out loud till today in my 65 and a half years. Transmute. Transmute. T-R-A-N-S-M-U-T-E. Or trans... Get it? I didn't speak. Transmute. Come on, keep up, people. I know it's getting late. Come on now. Now, okay, I had to look up what trans, transmute means. I had, like, I don't know. Like, we have transgender now. I, I didn't know it was transmute. I, 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 my head went all over the place. So I looked it up. To change from one form, nature, or substance, or a state, into another. So if you look at verse number 25, and you look at verse number 24, where the sinful desires of their hearts for sexual impurity, for the degrading of their bodies with one another, they exchange or they transmute the truth of God for a lie and they worship and serve created things rather than the creator who is forever praised. Amen. They have transformed what the truth is. They have taken it and they've totally transformed it. So because of that, therefore, they go to worshiping other things. And we see it over and over again. If... I won't have time, but if, if we went back to Hosea chapter 4, verse number 6, where it says that they've forsaken, they have no knowledge or acknowledgement of God, how can a world that is lost be redeemed if the redeemed fail to acknowledge who it is that's redeemed them? You want to walk by faith? Tell people who changed your life. Tell them. I've told countless people about Jesus Christ changing my life. And I get less and less Christmas cards every year. <laughs> but you know what? It doesn't matter. 
Because that's what transformed my life. And when I, here's the thing. When I tell other people that Jesus Christ saved me, you know what it does for me? It reminds me that Jesus Christ saved me. You, you see what I'm saying? Because if I'm saying, like, I, I look at my wife and go, I love you. I, I don't want to be that, we're not that couple, for sure. Or, or even with our kids and grandkids. We're not the, the family that just, it's assumed. <laughs> and then she goes, and that's our code. We love each other. Now, if she goes like that, I'm gone. Where's the mic's going down? We out. It's a whole different sign. But we say, I love you. Why, why do we say it to each other? It reinforces it to us. I love you. You love me? Can you say, can you say it in public? Elizabeth, it's a big one. It's Valentine's Day coming up, too. I'm not getting you anything. <laughs> All right, so we, we got to stop because there's, there's so much more. But, folks, you, you got to start to operate in the faith of God. Believe in for your salvation. Believe in every day that you walk with him. You're on this earth for a reason. Your days are numbered. All our days are numbered. But there's a reason for our days. Are we there yet? Oh. Come back next week. We'll keep talking. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your truth, for your word. I pray, God, that it penetrates the hardest of our hearts. Whether they're here, whether they're at home, no matter what, God, I just pray, Father, for hope salvation, forgiveness to be received and people to be set free, not through any words that we speak, but through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, for those that maybe have known you or don't know you, and God, they need to have a, make a commitment. I pray, Lord Jesus, that today is the day that they will commit. Today is the day that they'll repent. Today is the day, Lord, that they'll reach out and say, I need you with all my heart, soul, and spirit. With your heads bowed for just a moment, and we do this every week. If you want to pray to accept Christ in your life, I want to pray for you. I'm going to stay here. You're going to stay where you're at. If you're at home, you can pray with me in just a moment. But what we want to do is I want to lead you in a prayer that makes you begin your journey in Christ. And then you start walking in faith. If you want to pray with me right now, I'm going to ask you how we do it with everybody's eyes closed so I know. Starting on my left, if you want to pray just look at me right now. I'll see your eyes. We'll make eye contact. You can close your eyes in. Sure. Any others? Sure. Got them? Yep. My right. All you got to do is look at, my, look at me. Make eye contact. Sure. Cool. Got it. Yep. Got them. All right. Pray this from your heart. If you didn't look up, you can still pray. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I give you my soul my life, my spirit, my mind, my heart. I ask you to come into my heart. Change me. Set me free. Give me brand new life. I accept you in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.